COVID-19 is having a big impact on a lot of people's mental health. Many people have been isolated from friends and family, and they're feeling lonely. Others are anxious. NBC's chief medical correspondent, John Torres, joins me now. And Dr. Torres, how is our country's mental health response to the COVID-19 pandemic been so far? And Betsy, so far it's been okay, but you have to remember, we've all been inside for the past couple of months. So you're right, a lot of people are experiencing more anxiety, experiencing more depression right now, but they haven't been able to go out. A lot of times because these offices are closed, a lot of areas are using telehealth, telemental health to try and help get those things uh, better under control. But I think what's gonna happen is you're gonna see over the next couple of months, as people start to come outside, that anxiety, that depression is gonna start manifesting itself a little bit more, and they're gonna start looking for help from mental health services services from their own uh, phys physician services as well. And I think you're going to see the, the overall system get a little bit overwhelmed and hopefully that capacity is there to take care of people when they especially need to be taken care of, Betsy. Definitely. Well, you know, there's an interesting kind of side note on this. There's the people who have already been diagnosed. They know they have anxiety. They know they have depression. But out of this, there may be a group of people that have no idea that suddenly they have anxiety and depression. They don't know what to do. They don't know their signs. They're symptoms. Can you fill us in a little bit about what to look for? And Betsy, you're exactly right. A lot of people might be noticing these things and saying, well, it's probably because I've been inside for two months. That's probably what I'm feeling when in fact it could be this anxiety or depression. So a few things to, to look for. If they start having changes in their energy, changes in their appetite, if they start having sleep issues, meaning they're either sleeping more than they should or not sleeping much at all or having a lot of disturbed nightmare kind of sleeps, a lot of short tempers, that can be an issue that's also being raised because of this. And then on top of that, increased use of alcohol or drugs. And that's been a big concern over the past couple of months and something I've talked a lot about. But at the same time, it could be a definite sign of anxiety or depression, Betsy. Well, if we're worried about someone, what's the best way to offer to help them? So the best way to help yourself is essentially we're social animals. You want to keep a routine. You want to try and not social isolate yourself, but then you, you want to make sure that you're getting out with other people, whether it be through, through different types of uh, online social media type situations, simple phone calls. So just social isolation doesn't mean social disengagement. So you want to make sure you get out there and talk to other people. And if you do need help, definitely seek help. And that's probably the biggest message I could give you. There are a lot of ways to seek help through your own primary care provider, through mental health services, but just make sure you seek help or simply even talk to another friend about it. And of course, there's always the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. That number is at the bottom of our screen for everybody. Dr. John Torres, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you again tonight on Nightly News with Lester Holt. Mm -hmm.